Now, for the moment you've been waiting for, we will show a short video of our students welcoming Cal Ripken Jr. And after that video, two seniors, Stephanie Barkham and Alicia Kutches, will come forward and formally introduce Cal Ripken. So, somebody operating that video? Roll it. The Iron Man, Cal Ripken Jr. Really? He's speaking at this year's commencement? I love Cal Ripken. I actually told my mom that he was speaking at this year's and she was really upset that I wasn't graduating this year. It's really exciting because I've never seen him in person, so it'll be a first for me. It's, it's really great. He's a, he's a tremendous individual. He's a baseball player. Played for the Cardinals, I believe. Not many times in your life are you going to be able to hear a baseball legend who played for like 2,800 straight games give your commencement this. It's pretty awesome. He is the hometown hero. You know, my dad has all the Wheaties boxes at the house. I had a big poster in my room of Cal Ripken when I was a kid. Everyone's really excited to have him on campus. I'm definitely excited about Cal Ripken being here. Um, he's a Maryland le legend, obviously. He just, you know, represents like the best of Maryland. So I think it's, it's great that he's coming here. Go Cal! Go Cal! It's good to have you here, Cal. Great job, Cal Ripken. Nice to have you here. On behalf of the Senior Council and the Commencement Speaker Selection Committee, it is our distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you our most distinguished guest speaker, Mr. Cal Ripken, Jr. <laughs> Cal Ripken has always been an inspiring man. Some would call him stubborn, but we like to call him dedicated. Whether you're graduating and moving on to grad school, a new job, or even if you have no idea what you're doing after today, we can all learn something from Cal Ripken's dedication. Cal was born into a baseball family in Aberdeen, Maryland, only a short trip away from us here at the University of Maryland. Since Ripken's father was a longtime baseball coach, it's no surprise that Cal Ripken Jr. began playing professional baseball right after attending Aberdeen High School. Known, <laughs> known nationwide as the Iron Man, Cal Ripken played 21 years in Major League Baseball for the Baltimore Orioles, one of our favorite local teams. <laughs> Playing as both shortstop and third baseman, Cal Ripken is a 19-time All-Star and twice named an American League Most Valuable Player. After being a World Series champion in 1983, Cal Rifkin went on to break Lou Gehrig's record in 1995 for most consecutive games played, a record that had stood for 56 years and was deemed by many to be unbreakable. Mr. Ripken ended his playing streak in 1998 after playing 2,632 games. Cal Ripken was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 2007, but some of his greatest accomplishments were off the field. Ripken has contributed generously to many charities, including supporting research of Lou Gehrig's disease. With his brother, he also founded the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation, to help support underprivileged children attend baseball camps around the country. Not a baseball fan? You might also recognize Cal as the best-selling author of several children's books. With a record like Cal's, it should be obvious that the real Iron Man is right here and not in the theaters. His accomplishments to date have demonstrated that you don't have to wear a cape or an exoskeleton to be a superhero. Cal Ripken was selected as this year's commencement speaker 
because of his dedication to philanthropy, his determination to succeed, and the example that he sets. In 1983, 280 games into his streak, Cal Ripken said, I'd like to be remembered. I'd like to think that someday, two guys will be talking in a bar, and one of them will say something like, yeah, he's a good shortstop, but he's not as good as old Ripken was. Class of 2013, President Lowe, faculty, family, and friends, it is with great honor and pleasure that we introduce the University of Maryland Spring Commencement Speaker, someone who we will always remember, Mr. Cal Ripken, Jr. these right about now. Um, thank you so much for that warm um, applause. Uh, it does take me back to some wonderful moments as a baseball player and uh, I couldn't be more thankful that I was able to represent Baltimore and the state of Maryland everywhere um, in this country and also around the world. So thank you very much. My wife graduated from this fine university, although she will not allow me to reveal the year. 1981. I didn't get a college degree, but instead attended another kind of institution. We could call it the baseball university. Learning takes place every day and is occasionally offered by some of us who didn't get degrees. In the end, it's what we share from our experience that might make a difference in the lives of others. And I hope that some lessons from my long career in baseball might give you a lesson or two to supplement what you have learned as a Terp. Today, I would like to share for 10 minutes with you my views on talent, skill, and attitude. Let me start by saying that talent is something you are born with. I was lucky to have the talent to pursue a career in professional baseball. We are all born, I believe, with some talent, and sometimes the hard part is discovering what that talent is. Life is a series of experiences, and you should pay close attention to how you react to them. Leave yourself open to discover where your talent lives and how to deal with it. And remember that you may not always have the talent to do the first thing you would like to do. Dad would say that in baseball, nothing can replace talent. I can't teach someone to throw 95 miles per hour. The harsh reality, as you contemplate where you fit in, is that talent and aptitude is a requirement in some jobs. You can aspire to be a professional baseball player, but no matter how hard you want it or how hard you work at it, if you don't have the talent, you won't succeed. But let me also say that because levels of talent frequently vary, skill development also plays an important role in meeting many challenges. Skills. These are the things you learn and develop through training or practice. You've been developing your skills your whole life especially in all the years you've invested in school. So yes, in case you are wondering, making your way to this ceremony is worth it. You now have a set of skills which will help make you marketable. Skill development is where you apply your discipline and your work ethic to get the most out of your training. This is where you can gain a tremendous advantage. You can work your way to the top. The more you know and the better your skill, the more value you will have. You have to become a doer. Don't talk about all the things you could do. Start doing them. This is called actual experience and no one can give that to you. You should learn from all your experiences, no matter how trivial you might think they are. When my dad was in his development role, 
in the minor leagues with the Orioles, he coined a phrase that said, we try to put 40-year-old heads on 20-year-old bodies. It just doesn't work. What that meant was that dad and the other coaches tried to implant all the years of their own playing experiences into the young players' heads. But that wisdom can't be simply transferred. It also has to be experienced and earned by each individual. Coaches and teachers like dad might be able to guide their students to sidestep a few sand traps along the way. But learning also requires you to experience it yourself. Sorry folks, there are no shortcuts on this one. Now let me turn to what I consider the key to taking talent and skill to the highest level. Simply, it's attitude. Attitude is all about your outlook, your view of yourself and the world around you. Ask yourself, do you have a good or a bad attitude? Are you positive or negative as you, as you approach life's challenges? When I first started playing professional baseball, I quickly dismissed all this attitude talk. I thought it was a waste of time. Frankly, I just didn't get it. I was literally focused on the task of getting better and making it. All that mattered to me was getting my reps in practice and how I did in the games. The games were not contests between two teams, they were my individual exams. If I got three hits and we lost, I was happy. If we won and I went over, I was mad. I was obsessed with my stats. They were my ticket to the show. I couldn't stand the umpires because, from my view, every mistake they made would cost me. I had problems with the official scorekeepers because their decisions cost me hits and added errors to my record. I despised the groundskeepers because the conditions of the field affected my performance. It was my helmet's fault if I didn't get a hit, or my bat, or even the pine tar. My glove failed me if I made an error. Okay, you get the idea. But even with this attitude, I was moving up in the organization. I was improving. I and others rationalized my attitude problems as immaturity. And I kept on going all the way to the big leagues. Then it hit me. In fact, quite literally. I got hit with a 94 mile an hour pitch in the side of my helmet in Baltimore. I was struggling mightily in the early part of my rookie season and I was miserable. I was blaming others and stalled by my attitude. That shot to the head knocked some sense into me. Earlier in the week, my veteran teammate and all-star, Ken Singleton, had pulled me aside and showed me a tape of me throwing a helmet and just said, we don't do that here. That's not what it's all about. That's the wrong attitude. So, after getting beamed and while laying on the x-ray table, I started to think more about what Ken said. What's this secret that everyone seems to know but me? Well, the conclusion I came to was that it wasn't all about me, and the world certainly was not my enemy. I realized that I was affected with a negative attitude. That ball striking me helped flip the switch and I made a choice to have a positive attitude. My talent and skill had supported me to that point. My change in attitude helped me achieve being named Rookie of the Year that year and MVP the next. And what a difference it made in my career. I was propelled forward by my positive attitude. As I continued playing the game I loved, I stopped blaming. I was accountable. I became aware. I felt more accomplished. I was more in control. My rational mind started working instead of my reactive mind. Little things didn't affect me as much. I started finding solutions before they became issues. Positive attitude was now a part of my approach to life. Now, what can you take from my experience with a change in attitude? Well, when you truly have a positive attitude, you capture that energy of what can be accomplished 
as opposed to why it can't be done. You become a willing participant. You try things, you do things, you learn every step of the way. You become action-oriented. Your failures even become valuable experiences. Where would the world be without Thomas Edison's failures and his positive attitude in dealing with them? He himself said, I failed my way to success. Now you don't fail unless you're willing to try. And it's your positive attitude that allows you to do so. And even allows you to take the lessons you learn from failures and turn them into positive accomplishments. Attitude is not like talent. You are not born with a set attitude. It's a choice, and it can be changed, and it can be developed. So in conclusion, I'm confident you have found or will find your special talent. And you'll continue to develop your skills with the disciplines that have been instilled in you by this great university. And now, I ask you to thoroughly examine your attitude, to make it positive, and to go forth and make your mark on this world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cal, for that very inspirational address. You know, Woody Allen once said, 80% of success is showing up. Cal showed up 21 consecutive years. But the other, <laughs> but what I learned today is the other 20% that other 20% of success is positive attitude. Thank you. Because Cal Ripken exemplifies the qualities of character, values, hard work, and accomplishment that make us all proud, we are very pleased to confer upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Public Service. Cal, would you please stand? <laughs> Marianne Rankin, our provost, will now read the citation and formally present Mr. Ripken. For his commitment to an education involving dust, sweat, spikes, and character, for his remarkable perseverance and work ethic, the same qualities that keep the lights burning late on campus, for his 17-year streak of unbroken play, the equivalent of not missing school from kindergarten all the way through college, for his love of learning and teaching on and off the field, the qualities that inspire faculty to research, publish, and teach 101 level lectures, and for his sense of duty, tradition, and pride, his will to improve the next generation, our future. University of Maryland President Wallace Lowe now confers upon Cal Ripken, Jr the honorary degree, Doctor of Public Service. Here. 
under the authority granted by the State of Maryland to the Board of Regents of the University System of Maryland, and by the authority that the Board has delegated to me, I am pleased and proud to officially confer upon Carl Ripken, Jr., the degree Doctor of Public Service. Congratulations, Dr. Ripken.